Welcome in to Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Drell Hendricks. We've got a great interview today, a very special guest, the head coach of the South Aiken Thoroughbreds, Chris Hamilton. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Well, we appreciate your time. We really do. If this is you guys' first time tuning in, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Move and Change, and our website, moveandchange.com. That's M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S.com. Our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Coach Hamilton will be headed into his ninth season with the Thoroughbreds. They went four and seven last year. Coach, let's talk about your coaching career. You know, how did you get started? Where have you been? And how did you get to the head job now at South Aiken? Well, I will, uh, I started off, actually, I guess in Sumter was my first year of coaching. Um, I coached middle school for David Wright, who was my middle school coach. And uh, in, in transition between North Greenville and and heading to Coastal, I, I, I spent a semester in uh, Sumter, and I was cutting grass and then cutting, uh, coaching football in the in the afternoon, middle school football, um, and then got hooked up with Coach Early. He had just gotten a job at at uh, Myrtle Beach, and uh, kind of went in and talked to him and told him I would be going to Coastal, and and he uh, hired me and uh, spent nine years with him at Myrtle Beach. Won a state championship uh, in 2008 with him, um, and then from there uh, I went to Lexington for a year, and then we kind of met back, cross paths again, uh, back in uh, at Lexington when he came to Lexington. So he always uh, says I was a part of that move. I don't know if it's blaming me or not, but <laughs> he says I was always a part of that move. But uh, spent six years there at Lexington, uh, two under Josh Step too. Uh, which was two really good years for me too, as well. And then uh, in 2015, I came here to South Aiken as my first head job. And uh, you know, I was always a strength coach and offensive line coach, and worked with the offense and did some with defense under Coach Sitterly uh, for that one year in Lexington. Um, I was a defensive line coach for him for for that one year uh, while he was there at Lexington, the same time I was. So um, that's kind of my background. Uh, I've always been big in strength and and offensive line. Matter of fact, I still coach offensive line here at, at uh, South Aiken. Coach Hamilton, let's talk about your staff a little bit. Did you make any changes this this off season? And if you don't mind uh, going into detail a little bit about who's on staff, some up and comers, just show those guys a little bit of love. Yeah, um, I have my defense coordinator is Lee Houston. He uh, took over the defense um, last year uh, as. Um, that was his first year as a coordinator. Uh, he, I hired him on a few round. I think it was the COVID year. Uh, he, uh, he was our defensive back coach. And then when Coach Hayes went to Strong Thurman, Matt Hayes, uh, we hired. Uh, you know, I hired him as my defensive coordinator. He's done a really good job, and he's kind of taken over some of the strength uh, stuff for me. Um, he does a really good job with that. Um, and then I have Bowen Smith, who is my offensive coordinator. Um, Bowen actually played for me my first year uh, here at South Aiken. That was his senior year. He was my quarterback. Um, and he went to Pikeville, uh, graduated from there, and was actually working in the tax office. And I said, hey, man, why don't you come and, and, and coach a little bit for us in the afternoons? You know, he you, you got off a decent time. And so he came and just kind of hung out with us that year and, and coached a little bit. And, I, you know, you just kind of sometimes you see it in guys, and I told him he had the goods, and uh, then I was able to get him back last year, and and, and he became my offensive coordinator last year. Um, did a really good job, and for a quarterback, he likes to run the ball a lot. So uh, me and him are on the same page with that. <laughs> so uh, we uh, anyway. So uh, that's that's my two coordinators, and then I've coached Thomas DeGenero, who has been with me since I've been here. Um, he works with me with the offensive line. Uh, we just added James Gore. Uh, he was at North Augusta before. He actually graduated from South Aiken. He's our defensive line coach. Um, Larry Singer, who was uh, joined us last year, uh, he was a head coach in California at one time, so it's always good to have them kind of guys on your staff. Um, just a hard worker, does a good job with our linebackers. Um, and then uh, Shamari Moody, we just hired him as our running back coach. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of turnover my first eight years, seven, eight years here. Uh, it was pretty much the same staff for a long time. Um, but then, you know, I guess 
sooner or later you're going to have that. And so uh, this past two years, we've had a little bit more turnover than what we've been used to. Um, but uh, I think I really like this staff I've got here right now. Um, I think they do a really good job. Uh, I got Hendrick Snyder coaching my receivers. Um, he's been with me here the whole time and kind of worked with JVs for a while and has moved up through the program. Um, his, this was his first teaching job, coaching job, and uh, he's, he's done a really good job. And he's one of those guys that you got to have. You, you can't run a program without him. Um, he, does, he does a really good job of, of a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, too. Um, and he also keeps me straight a lot. So that, that's a good deal. So, Coach, for folks who maybe haven't seen you guys play the last couple of years, you know, what kind of schemes and styles do you guys like to run on offense and defense? Well, the scheme really hasn't changed as far as we're a spread offense. Um, now, how we do it's probably a little bit different, especially past, you know, two years going into this year just because uh, of our quarterback. Uh, we got Terrence Smith who, you know, he started as a sophomore, but really was our best receiver going into his sophomore year. Um, and then uh, we had lost our first string quarterback. And the second string guy was uh, got this is when they were still, you know, sitting people out for COVID. And so he had a couple times he had guys, uh, people in his classroom that were um, that were tested positive for COVID. And, you know, just because he was in the classroom with him, he had to end up getting quarantined for two weeks. Um, so <laughs> kind of by elimination, Terrence became our, <laughs> our starting quarterback. And then after the second game of that happening, it was just obvious he was the one of the best athletes on the field, if not the best athlete on the field. And, uh, you know, why wouldn't you give him the ball every chance you can? So yeah. um, we always like to put the ball in his hand and, and let things happen. So, um, but so, and he's progressed from that point of just kind of being a wide receiver who was playing the quarterback to being a quarterback. And as that's progressed, our offense is, progressed into what it is now. We're, we're really heavy on running the ball. So Terrence had 2, 000, over 2,000 yards rushing last year. Our running back had over 1,700 yards rushing. Um, we had a really good offensive line last year, but, you know, it's, I think it's part of the scheme too. Uh, so we'll see this year um, how, how it goes. But, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of been a progression of work. Uh, a lot of, you know, everything really is triple option nowadays. Everybody says, you know, triple options out, but everybody's running triple option. It's just the way you get the, the third option in. So, um, you know, so that's kind of us. And then on defense, we're, we're a odd front defense. We'll be 3-4, uh, some 3-3, three, three, uh, and uh, just kind of working that. And like the attack on defense and be aggressive. Um, we had started a lot of young sophomores last year. At any point in the season, we had seven to eight sophomores on the field which, you know, it can be a rough year, uh, but uh, they got a lot of playing time and got a lot better. And we're looking for really good things out of them this year. Coach, you mentioned you have one of the most dynamic backfields, you know, Terrence Smith at the quarterback spot, Javon Edwards playing running back, um, you know, both of those all-state selections. Who are some other guys that we should be on the lookout for this year? No, you got to plug in some some offensive linemen that you lost from last year. And then, you know, who are those young guys on defense that you expect to shine? Yeah, so on offense, we've got uh, two offense linemen who, you know, started last year or started by the end of the year was a full-time starter. Um, and John Fogel, uh, our center, so that's always good. I played center myself in high school and college, so I always have a special place in my heart for them guys. Uh, <laughs> but um, so, you know, you got to get be able to get the ball. That's the, that's the most important thing. Um, so – you know, him coming back is big for us, I think. And then Sebastian Gallo, he's our starting left tackle. Uh, and he saw, I think, about half of the season last year, he was our starter after Will got, got hurt. So um, he saw significant minutes and significant playing time last year, which was good. Uh, Tyson Pitts is playing offenses too, and he's done a really good job with that. Um, he's, he's, he's the prototypical, what we like to have at our guards. He's He's 6'3", uh, 300, and can move really well. Also, will be playing some defense. Um, you know, and that's unusual for us. We usually don't try to play guys, especially on offense and defense line, both ways. Um, but he'll definitely be one of those guys that we'll have to do that some with. And then Michael Cohen is another offensive guard. 
uh, he uh, he's not prototypical. He's a he's a wrestler and um, he's five ten, about two hundred pounds, but uh, really gets after you. Very very athletic um, and and got a hard he's hard nose. So uh, we we we're, we're excited about him. Andrew Kirkland's one of our only starting receivers back from last year. Uh, he's a good steady. Uh, runs great routes, makes all the catches, uh, makes the tough catches, always kind of one of Terrence's, um, you know, go-to guys, I guess. Uh, and then um, Malik Scurry has made some big leaps and gains uh, this offseason. He's kind of one of those guys that can go up and get the ball at a high point. Um, so we're excited about him in the, in the season he could have. Um, and on defense, uh, we got uh, Garrett. Uh, still, he's playing middle linebacker. He's a kid that's been in the program. Uh, you know, he was my ball boy, I think, my first couple of years here. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yes. I got a picture of him and a couple of other guys. Um, Caden Eichelberger, who's playing right tackle for us, whose brother played for us. Uh, that's the thing. Once you get somewhere and you've been there for, you know, going on yeah. nine years, all of a sudden you get little brothers playing and, <laughs> and kids that been around the program, came to camp. Um, we got those guys starting to show up and actually produce for us here, which is really big. Um, you know, so um, we got Garrett Steele uh, and we got uh, uh, Keem Walcott. He's playing, he's a sophomore that's playing defensive end, uh, is an explosive athlete. He's also playing some running back, uh, <laughs> but he's more of a pounder. Uh, but he, uh, especially when we get in 20 package, he can really. Um, be that extra back in there, uh, but he's he's an explosive defensive lineman. We're excited about him, um, and then you know of course I said Pitts and and uh, you know secondary wise Justin Bradley's a returner, uh, Chris Lee he's a returner uh, in the secondary. Um, Ethan Bentley he's a returner that's, that saw significant minutes last year. So we're excited about the defense. Um, you know their coach is 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 being really aggressive and 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 I like that. Um, I think you know some of our best years, our defense was was super aggressive uh, as far as you know trying to get the ball out, trying to trying to you know make stuff happen in the game. And I think that's big for us. Um, and you know with us, we need to be able to control the ball a little more. I think last year, I mean we we like to say that we controlled the ball, but and and we did, but. A lot of times T would break those things off in 70, you know, a 70 yard <laughs> yeah. run. And I'd have to get on the headset and tell Lee, hey, man, I'm sorry. I know y'all just came off of a, <laughs> off of a drive, but, uh, you know, I don't know what else to do other than take, tell him to take a knee. But um, so he, uh, you know, it's it's exciting to have guys like that on the field. You know, um, I've always been very fortunate here. I've always said it's, it's Jimmy's and Joe's, uh, not so much X's and O's. I mean, I understand that. Uh, you know, I've always been very fortunate. I've always had really good players here, but I always knew there were really good players at South Aiken. Uh, you know, coaching against them when I was at Lexington, I always watched the film and said, "Man, uh, you know, they got they got some dudes over there." And so we've always been fortunate with that. And uh, I like this group a lot. They're they're exciting to uh, go out to practice with every day. They're always excited about practice. Um, which is fun. It's kind of contagious. Uh, sometimes you might be dragging, I, I, and I think they kind of lift you up on that when you see how excited they are. Um, and it doesn't matter if they're, you know, 110 degrees outside, uh, they're ready to go. Uh, matter of fact, yesterday with the storms and stuff and our scrimmage got canceled, and we were trying to go and it was hot and it's too hot and, you know, had to bring them in and we stre were stretching in there and just waiting. Finally, we just called it because the storm was coming in. I said, you know, boys, we're, we're just going to call it today. Uh, you know, there was <laughs> genuine disappointment uh, on them. So when you got a group like that, you know, that makes it worthwhile. It's exciting. I don't know. I don't know that we're very good, uh, but we got the potential to be pretty good. And, you know, with when you're with a group of guys that get it like that, then, then that's exciting to be around. So, Coach, you know, you guys play a really tough non-region schedule with guys like Lexington and White Knoll and Clinton yeah. and others. You know, Whoever how does that, that help? Schedule up as an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> how does that, you know, help prepare you guys for for the region run there and a tough region that you play in, really? Yeah. Well, my thought was that that would get us ready for the big, you know, for playoff runs. I knew we were going to have a fairly decent team last year, offensively especially. I knew we were going to be young on defense. 
my thought was that would really get us ready for the for region play and get us ready for uh, get us ready for the playoffs. Um, and then you go to some big venues like Lexington, like River Bluff, White Knoll. You go to places like that, and that kind of Clinton. I mean, those are those are playoff field towns when you go to them. Um, and and even Gilbert, you know. Uh, so when you when you go to those kind of kind of you're hoping that that gets you ready for the playoffs and and for region play. Um, now, I don't think I realized, you know, everybody was. They all had really, really good years last year. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were in all those games. I mean, we were we we're competing in all those games. And, and I think, you know, the main thing is you, you want to make sure you're ready for region. And, um, at, you know, back in my day, you know, it was it was got to win them all. But I think as I get older, I think, you know, see the long big picture on this. And, um, you know, want to go ahead and get ready for region, make sure we can – make that run for region because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Uh, you go win the region, then that gives you a better playoff position. So, um, I, you know, and, and, you know, plus I like to compete against people that are, you know, good, good players, good, good coaches. So, and I think we've got that on our schedule really in good in full. So. Coach, the preparation for the season never stops throughout the all season. You got spring ball, seven on seven scrimmages, and then you're into the first week of camp. You mentioned that this group of guys they really, they really, they really get it. What else have you learned about this team throughout the process before we go into the the final push before the season actually starts? Yeah, I think they're just really close knit. You know, we always say that we we end the season like we we put a bow on it like right before we go to Christmas, and we say, okay, this is our max out time. We're gonna kind of see where we're at. This is kind of the end of the season of, of whatever the previous season was, uh, right before Christmas, right before Christmas break. And then you come back in January, and that's kind of where we say this is the new season right here. Uh, I think you got to have an opening and a close to it. Um, so I think that's a good way to do it. And then so these, this group's been working in their football in the football class and, and just really, I think, just the growth they've had. They've had some big growth in the weight room. That's been really big. And but just that too and mentally uh how they've grown and and how they study the game and and how they how they just they're just different as far as the way they they like to be around football they like to learn football um not that other groups haven't but this group this group really does it just it kind of it really shows um and they're excited to be out there and um and they're really a close knit group too um so they hang out together sometimes you know I'm I'm go out 45 minutes after practice and I'm running them out of the parking lot because they're just, they're just sitting there hanging out. Um, so I think if you got a group like that, and they genuinely care about each other. They bought into what we're, we're selling as far as what football offers, not just the game part, uh, you know, the life lessons you learn in football, you know, our why, uh, I think they've really bought into that. This group's heard that for, for a while. And like I said, we've got guys that have been around our program for eight years now, uh, at whether it being ball boys or going to camps or this or that. So um, watching their brothers play, uh, you know, so um, they understand what we're doing here, I think, a little bit better, and, and, and that, that, that pays off. And I think our staff does a good job, too, with that, uh, you know, of preaching our why, preaching our what, what we do. So. so, Coach, who have you guys, uh, you know, scrimmaged so far, and who do you have lined up for that and for Jan Breeze here as we prefer – as we prepare for week zero. Yeah, so we had Saluda. We scrimmaged them. We were able to get in a, a pretty decent scrimmage last Thursday against them. Um, you know, we went uh, – we were able to get a bunch of plays in, uh, more than I thought we were going to get before the rain came in, uh, which was really good because, you know, a lot of people didn't get to go Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then um, we were supposed to scrimmage Barnwood yesterday, and uh, we missed out on that with the rain and everything. So um, – you know, it is it is what it is on that. Um, we're going to end up playing uh, Bamberg in the uh, Jamboree, in the Aiken County Jamboree. So we're excited about that. But we're starting to get ready for Silver Bluff now. So I told the guys yesterday after the scrimmage was canceled that, you know, now we, we start getting ready for Silver Bluff. So.
Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA member qualification required. Guys, you're going to shift a little bit to a, a little bit easier question. We always ask the coaches this. Kevin, our, Kevin and I are coming down to Aiken for a game. Where are some restaurants that we need to hit in the area uh, before we before we take on a, a thoroughbreds contest? Yeah, so you want to probably go hit up. Uh, uh, well, I'll be honest with you. The best to me, the best place is, and you got to get here a little bit early. But there's a there's a food truck, and I I don't even know Ooh. the name. It sits across from Chick Fil A. I okay. can't pronounce it. I'll murder it if I. Say <laughs> it is it is real. It's a Mexican food truck. It is unbelievable. Okay. Get the case of burritos. Ooh, ooh. Uh, they are. I mean, it's 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 something special. We got for a while in the spring there. We were going every Friday during our lunch yeah. break. We have somebody make a run and go get them. It, it, there's something good, and then um, that that's really good. But if you're here for dinner, you head over to to the alley down that way. Uh, you know, there's lots of good restaurants. That's you know, Aiken's a pretty neat town as far as that is. You got uh, you got some really nice restaurants down there. You got Whiskey Alley. Uh, got uh mellow mushroom down there you you've got um i mean they you know fuse they they just got a bunch of cool restaurants down there uh downtown by the alley that that are really good you know that's the thing i i never i didn't really think we'd be in aiken this long but my wife has fallen in love with the town <laughs> yeah. i fell in love with the town i fell in love with the kids and the school and uh you know this has come home for us so um you know it's 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 a special place so, Coach, you know, you've been – we mentioned this is your ninth year at South Aiken. You're really kind of the elder statesman there in the region. Just got three new head coaches this year at, you know, Airport and, and Aiken and North Augusta. Does that make it a, a little more difficult as far – obviously, you're not thinking of those guys yet, but as far as game planning, you're just not so as familiar with them as you used to be with, you know, maybe uh, some of the other guys used to be there. Well, unfortunately, in in our region, it's kind of been a revolving door a little <laughs> bit. So, yeah, yeah. I've kind of gotten used to in this nine years of – seeing different guys come in and out and um you know it doesn't it that you're gonna everybody's different from year to year anyway so for me that's not you know of course you know if 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 you know a coach pretty well you know what they're gonna run defensively and stuff like that so some of these guys i guess i don't have quite the knowledge of what exactly they're gonna do but the guy who's the defense coordinator over at north augusta used to be my defense coordinator here so i know pretty much what i'm gonna do on the flip end of that he knows what we're gonna do too so um on offense so he uh you know so that's that's a little bit different but i don't know it's uh it's one of those things where you just um you know you just prepare for week to week anyway so at the end of the day you just you gotta put in the film and go go figure it out so coach with your experience you've coached in three distinct regions of the state what are some of the coolest toughest environments that you've been able to experience um you know as a head coach or as a coach in general Dylan, no doubt when we we're at Myrtle mm-hmm. Beach and used to go see them Wildcats, man, that was <laughs> that was something else. Between you know, the white the, walls over there. <laughs> oh man, the fans over there. Uh you know, as long as they beat you, they loved you at the end if you played a good game against them, as long as they beat you. But if you didn't, you better get going. Uh and then uh you know, Lake City, I always thought that was pretty cool with the wall back there. Yeah. I, I used to love going there. I, I especially when coach Moss, uh, was there. Um, you know, he, he kind of got me up in coaching too, a little bit, helped me get started. Uh, his son played with me, played quarterback with me at North Greenville. And so I knew him really well. So he kind of helped me get with Scott. And, um, so it's always cool to go there. Uh, you know, play, play, played in Somerville twice at Lexington and playoff games. That's, that's a special place. I played there when I was a player too. Uh, when we were at Sumter. So I was always, I always thought that was pretty cool, just the history behind there. Clinton this past year, man, you talk about a tough environment and just a, yeah. uh, a place that, that, you know, you feel the history there and you kind of, sure. Uh, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, Clinton's a, Clinton's a nice place. So, well, last one here for your coach. What are some goals for the 2023 season for the South Aiken Thoroughbreds? Well, I think our goals are always the same. And I mean, you know, you can ask our guys. It's been the same since I've I've been here. We want to win the opener, you know. Always want to win the opener. Uh, and it used to be, you know, something when it opener used to be Aiken uh, when we weren't in the same region. So that was always a big thing. But you know, being Silver Bluff now, that's a 
It was a big crosstown rival, and it's become a, a pretty good rivalry. And me and D'Angelo are, are really good friends. So, um, you know, that that's one. We want to win the region. You know, we want to win the county. Uh, anybody we play in the county, we want to be able to beat them and, and win the region and then win state. So, I mean, that's, that's always kind of been our goals. Um, you know, on a smaller scale, we want to – play really good defense, sound defense this year. I think that's big. Uh, we got to be able to run the ball. I mean, uh, that's kind of that's kind of what we, our best teams have always been really good at running the ball. Uh, 2016, when we played for the Upper State Championship, we were really good at running the ball. Um, you know, so that's uh, that's kind of the deal. That's uh, that's always the deal. Play, play aggressive, fast defense and, and be able to run the ball. Um, if you can do that pretty well, you'll usually pretty successful in this game well this has been great i want everyone to go check out the thoroughbreds program on facebook and twitter they do a great job sharing highlights and updates of their kids you know uh definitely want to follow them there and check them out like i mentioned follow us on social media facebook twitter etc at moving change moving change.com our podcast on apple spotify google and more moving the change about our founders federal credit union joining us for coach we'll let him go today I uh, just want to sincerely thank you, Coach, for your time today. We know it's crunch time. Got a lot going on this this point of the season, you know, as you prepare, you know, to kick things off in a couple of weeks. So we really appreciate that. One of my favorite programs to follow is South Lake, and Kevin will tell you that. Uh, you guys are just exciting. I love the brand of football that you guys play. We'll definitely be watching. Wish you continued success. Stay healthy, and you hope hope you guys have a great season. Well, thank you. Let me give a shout out to our social media director, my daughter Zoe Hamilton. She's at Coastal okay. Carolina. She actually does stuff for them, but we also Anna Gray. She she's at the school too. They do a they do a heck of a job. And trust me, none of that. People ask me, "Is that you?" And I said, "No, that's not me. <laughs> that's not me at all. I don't even hardly know how to turn my phone on." So uh, that's all them. But they do a great job of it, and it highlights our kids and highlights our program. Sure. Um, and so. But anyway, y'all mentioned it, so I thought I'd throw them a shout out. To they so, do a great sure. job. They really do. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it, Coach. Look forward to getting down to a game and getting to check you guys out this year. And uh, best of luck this season, all right? All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. it, Coach. Appreciate y'all.